You've waited your entire life for this to see me look goofy. So I have this Oculus Rift and this HTC Vive. They both came out this week and we're gonna put them head to head because we all know you can only afford one. Let's talk hardware and we're gonna start with the Oculus Rift and its design which is more rigid than the DK2 or the Vive for that matter. It uses a spring-loaded mechanism here. It is supremely easy to put on and take off and you get a perfect fit every single time. And it also is very lightweight, uh, which is very important when you want to use the Oculus for a couple of hours. Another advantage, headphones. As you can see, they're built into the headset, which is very convenient when you're lazy like me and you don't want to have to pull other headphones out. Also convenient because you can't see, so you don't really want to be jostling around on your desk trying to figure out where you left your headphones after you've put this over your eyes. This thing, oh god. So the Oculus controller is a bit of a misnomer because it is actually an Xbox controller. You use it to play games that you would probably already play with a controller, so that means platformers, uh, right now we're playing Kronos, which is more of a hack and slash Dark Souls style game. In a VR world, this is just not very fun. And if you don't play games, it's very hard. I can't really put a controller into the hands of, of my mom, for instance, and say, hit the A button. This is not interesting. This is not intuitive. It's just a controller. Uh, we can also talk about the camera here. It's very different from the DK2 iteration, which used to mount on top of the monitor. This, they've built this weird street light, light post type design. It sits on your desk. You can still take it off and mount it on the monitor, but that's not included with the kit. So this is the default way that most people are going to use it. It looks really nice. It looks modern. It looks sleek, but it's not as obvious where you should put the hardware. Do you put it on the back of your desk so it's out of the way? Do you put it on the front of your desk so it tracks more of the room? There's not really a good indicator of what you should do with this. So from a, an aesthetic standpoint, I really like it. From a usability standpoint, it's not that great. The design of the Vive headset is a bit like the old Oculus DK2, actually. There's an elastic strap running around the back, and the, it's, it's a very front-heavy design, so it kind of pulls on the back of your head a little more than the, the Oculus does. If you're going to use it for a long-term setting, you know, two, three, four hours, however long you want to be in the Matrix. Uh, the Oculus headset is just going to keep your head more comfortable over the long term. The Vive uses two cameras for tracking, or actually they're not really cameras, they are futuristic laser stations called Lighthouse. Uh, and they track a much larger area, they track five meters diagonal, which I don't know what that actually is in American terms, but something like 15 feet by 15 feet. Uh, and so you can walk around, and then when you get too close to the edge, the Vive will put up a wall in front of you of blue lights called Chaperone. And that tells you, hey, don't keep walking or you're going to walk into your furniture or walk into a wall or whatever. Uh, but within that space, you have designated that space as open area, so you know that there's nothing you're going to run into and you can walk reasonably confidently through the space without worrying about tripping and dying. One of the major inconveniences with the Vive is the headphone situation. It doesn't really have one. There's a jack in the back, so if you have an eighth inch plug, you can just throw it in there and you're good to go with your earbuds, your headphones, whatever you prefer. But it's definitely not as convenient as the Oculus with its swivel down headphones. So HTC and Valve partnered to create these custom controllers for the Vive. They're actually very similar to the Steam controller. You have a haptic touchpad here. You also have grips on the side and then triggers on the back and then two buttons above and below the trackpad. And that's it, those are your controls. But they're tracked by the lighthouse stations, so you can gesture around, you can point them at things. Uh, it's pretty intuitive. I'd definitely rather have the Vive controllers than an Xbox controller. I've been playing games my entire life, I know how to use this controller with a doofy headset on my face. But it's just not the same. You'd be surprised how much a little haptic feedback can make you feel like when you reach down and pick up a stick, you actually picked up a stick. 
The Xbox controller is fine for traditional games, but it doesn't really duplicate that feeling, and in VR, that's necessary. Uh, f I hit the windmill. So let's get into the experiences here. As you can see with the Oculus, I am sitting down. Uh, this is sit-down VR. It's kind of a misnomer because I can stand up and I can move maybe two feet in any direction. Uh, in fact, certain games advise you to stand up before you start playing. But I'm not going to be roaming around the room at will. And in fact, there is no chaperone. There is no way of knowing where you are in the Oculus. So what you end up with is very traditional gaming experiences on the Oculus, but in virtual reality. So I'm in the world. I can turn around. I can look at walls. I can see what is off in the distance. It's definitely not the same sort of experience as being able to get up and walk around. It is not room scale VR, and that is sort of a shame at the end of the day. So the draw of the Vive is the room scale experience, which is to say you move around and you do dumb things, and it looks very goofy, but it's also a hell of a lot of fun. So right now I am firing arrows at people attacking my castle, and I'm doing a very poor job of it. Um, that is the full Vive experience, and to facilitate that, people have made a lot of demos. So when the Vive launches today, there will be a lot of things like this, things where you have one goal, and you're just doing that goal for as long as possible. That is a lot of the Vive launch day catalog, unfortunately. Uh, it definitely doesn't have the depth of the Oculus catalog at launch. But on the other hand, it's a lot of fun. It is, in general, a more interesting application of VR. Should I eat this, this trash donut, guys? Yeah. Oh, delicious moldy trash donut. And I threw up on the phone. Let's talk price, because for most people, that will be the deciding factor. The Oculus comes with the headset, controller, camera, and the remote for $600. Vive comes with headset, two tracking stations, two controllers, for 800 and honestly even though this costs $200 more I would say that it is the better choice the oculus does not come with hand tracking controllers those launched later this summer and by the time you buy those you might be looking at the same $800 price point anyway for what I think is sort of not a great experience so which one of these two really expensive headsets wins I think if you watched the video it's pretty clear it's the Vive it's slightly better hardware and every experience that I've played on it takes better advantage of the fact that it's VR. You want to walk around, you want to do goofy things with your hands, and sure, people might make fun of you, but you can't see or hear them, so why does it matter? So which one should you buy? That's the big question here, and honestly, I'm going to say neither. This is a lot of money, and with the amount of money that you spend on this, you could buy a better graphics card, a better monitor, things that you will help you day to day in the way that these probably will not. These are great novelty items, they're fun, you can show them off to friends, you can make cool stuff, but at the end of the day, I don't really think that you're going to use them that long because there's not that much stuff to play on them yet and I don't see that happening for six months, maybe a year. So my official recommendation, wait. Wait until the next generation and then we'll maybe see whether it's worth buying in.